Hey guys, welcome to Spec Transfer and to topic 3.4.2, DNA and protein synthesis from the AQA A-level biology specification. First, we'll cover what the genome and proteome are, followed by the structure of mRNA and tRNA. We will then cover how protein synthesis works from transcription and gene splicing all the way to translation. So let's make a start. The genome is the complete set of genes in a cell. The proteome is the full range of proteins that a cell is able to produce. There are two types of RNA that are important in protein synthesis. mRNA, which stands for messenger RNA, and tRNA, which stands for transfer RNA. mRNA transfers genetic information from the DNA to the ribosomes, where it acts as a template for protein synthesis. tRNA, on the other hand, transfers amino acids that are used to make proteins to the ribosomes. mRNA is a very long single polynucleotide strand. It's a polymer of RNA nucleotides. It possesses information in the form of codons, it is the sequence of codons that determines the amino acid sequence of a specific polypeptide that will be made. tRNA, on the other hand, is a shorter single polynucleotide strand. Hydrogen bonds between specific base pairs cause the molecule to fold into a cloverleaf shape. At one end, there is a specific sequence of three bases known as an anticodon, which is complementary to a specific tRNA codon. At the other end, there is an amino acid binding site. Note that ATP provides the energy for the bond to form between the amino acid and the tRNA molecule. A typical exam question would be to compare the structure of mRNA and tRNA. Remember that when asked to compare in exams, always mention both things which you are comparing. For example, mention that mRNA is very long, whereas tRNA is very short or that mRNA has no hydrogen bonds, whereas tRNA does. So let's move on to how proteins are synthesized. When a cell needs a protein, it must activate the gene for that protein. This allows the protein to be synthesized, which happens in two steps, transcription and translation. Transcription is the production of mRNA from DNA. In eukaryotic cells, this takes place in the nucleus, and in prokaryotic cells, this takes place in the cytoplasm, as remember, prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus. In transcription, first the enzyme RNA polymerase binds to the start of a gene and begins to unwind the DNA, exposing some of the bases. This works because the RNA polymerase has a DNA helicase enzyme attached to it, which breaks hydrogen bonds between specific complementary base pairs. Next, free RNA nucleotides associate with their exposed complementary bases on the antisense strand of the unwound DNA by hydrogen bonding. Just to note that in the DNA double helix, which is comprised of two strands, one strand is called the sense strand and the other is called the antisense strand. RNA polymerase then adds each nucleotide to the mRNA polynucleotide chain by forming a phosphodiester bond. Once the RNA polymerase has passed by, hydrogen bonds between the uncoiled strands of DNA reform. The strands then recoil into a double helix. When the RNA polymerase reaches a stop triplet code, it detaches from the DNA and the production of mRNA is complete. Be sure not to get mixed up with the words triplet code and codon, as you do not get stop codons on DNA, you only get stop triplet codes. Note that because of the complementary base pairing, the mRNA strand is anti-parallel to the antisense strand and has the same base sequence as the sense strand, just that thymine is replaced by uracil. Note that in eukaryotes and prokaryotes, the products of transcription are different. In eukaryotes, transcription results in the production of pre-mRNA. This is because both introns and exons are copied during transcription. Just to recap, introns are sections of DNA that do not code for anything. They have to be removed so that they don't affect the amino acid sequence in translation. 
To recap introns and non-coding DNA, just follow the link top right. Introns are removed in gene splicing and the exons are then spliced together, forming mature mRNA, which is ready for translation by the ribosomes. Note that this occurs in the nucleus. The mature mRNA then leaves the nucleus via the nuclear pores. In prokaryotes, on the other hand, there is no need for gene splicing as introns don't exist in prokaryotic DNA. The mRNA passes directly to the ribosomes for translation. The final stage in protein synthesis is translation. And this is the production of polypeptides from the sequence of codons carried by mRNA. First of all, a ribosome becomes attached to the start codon at one end of the mRNA. A tRNA molecule with an anticodon complementary to the first codon on the mRNA attaches itself to the mRNA by complementary base pairing. Next, a second tRNA molecule attaches itself to the next codon in the same way. The two amino acids attached to the tRNA molecules are joined by a peptide bond using an enzyme and ATP, which is hydrolyzed to provide energy. Next, the ribosome moves along the mRNA and another codon is now available for the next tRNA to bind, carrying a third amino acid. The first tRNA dissociates, leaving its amino acid behind. The amino acid on the third tRNA is added to the dipeptide and the ribosome moves along. The second tRNA then dissociates. This process is repeated and amino acids are added at a time to form a polypeptide. When the ribosome reaches a stop codon, the ribosome, mRNA, and the last tRNA separate. The polypeptide chain is now complete. Great, so that would be all topics covered. We've had a look at the definitions of genome and proteome. We've covered the structures of mRNA and tRNA. We've had a look at transcription, as well as gene splicing, as well as translation. Thanks guys for watching. Please feel free to comment, subscribe, add any suggestions. Next time we will be looking at topic 3.4.3, which is genetic diversity can arise as a result of mutation or during meiosis.